Hello, Prof. Joe here. Today we're going to talk about the dot product and specifically how we can use the dot product to help us solve problems in engineering statics. We're going to start off just by defining the dot product. Uh, it should be review. You've probably seen the dot product in previous classes. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to have a couple vectors, vector A and vector B, and they're going to be separated by an angle theta. Now these vectors could be in 2D or 3D. We're going to define these vectors in the most generic way. Uh, they're going to have some distance in the i, some in the j, and some in the k. We're going to use the coefficient shown. Okay? If we take any two vectors and we dot them together, we're always going to get the same thing. We're going to get a dotted with b, so any two vectors dotted together are going to give us the magnitude of the first vector times the magnitude of the second times the cosine of the angle in between them. That is the definition of the dot product. And you'll notice that I don't have any harpoons on the right hand side here. You get a scalar out of the dot product. In fact, it's typically, it's often called the scalar product. And this is the only time you're going to have an equation with vectors on one side and scalars on the other. Because typically, well, we know that vectors cannot be equal to scalars, but the dot product with two vectors can be equal to a scalar. What do I mean by a scalar? Well, a scalar is just a number. It gives you a magnitude, not a magnitude and direction. These vectors, because they have harpoons over here, they have magnitude and direction. And on this side, we just have a number. OK, so we have the definition of the dot product. But this is not typically how you calculate it, because often you don't have theta. The way you calculate it is actually much more simple. To calculate the dot product, you're just going to take matching coefficients, multiply them together. For example, you'll take ax times bx. And then you'll add it to ay times by. And you'll add that to az times bz. Now I want to be very clear here. There is no i, j, and k on this side. These are scalars. These are just numbers that are going to add together, and you're going to end up with a single number in the end. And what does that number mean? It means the magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of another times the cosine of the angle in between them. I also want to talk briefly about notation. Because you may be used to, with scalar multiplication, using uh, different symbols interchangeably. For example, if you wanted 5 times 3, sometimes you might write 5 times 3 with a dot. Other times you might write 5 times 3 with parentheses. And still other times you might write 5 times three with a cross. All three of those are multiplication. And with scalars, all three are the same. With vectors, they are not the same. So it's very important that you're careful with your notation. If you want the dot product, you use a dot. If you want the cross product, you use an x. And if you want a scalar product, which would be multiplying a scalar times a vector, you can use parentheses. Now, we've covered that before. What happens when we multiply a scalar times a vector? Well, for example, if I wanted to multiply 2 times the vector a, I would end up with 2a, a vector in the same direction that has a magnitude that's twice as long. OK, next I want to talk about some properties of the dot product that we can use. And then we'll go into uses. OK, let's talk about some properties of the dot product and how we can use math with it. The first one is commutative property, which means you get the same answer regardless of the order. A dotted with B equals B dotted with A. You can put them in either order, you're going to get the same answer. The second one is if we have a scalar multiplied by a dot product, we can really throw that scalar wherever we want. We can put it with the first one. We can put it with the second one. We're going to get the same answer, because that scalar is going to mix in the same way with this multiplication. The next one is distributing a dot product. It's exactly the same as you would expect as how we do multiplication with scalars. If we have a dotted with b plus c, that's going to be equal to a dotted with b plus a dotted with c. 
And finally, I wanted to mention what happens when we dot two vectors that are perpendicular to each other. Now, I already told you the definition of A dotted with B is AB times the cosine of the angle in between them. Now, if there are two vectors that are perpendicular to each other, what is the cosine of 90 degrees? Well, the cosine of 90 is, of course, 0. So if you dot two vectors together, such as i and j, i and j are always perpendicular to each other, and you know those are unit vectors, cosine of 90 is 0, so you're always going to get 0 if you dot two vectors that are perpendicular to each other. So now you know quite a bit about the dot product. Now let's talk about how we can use it. I'm going to talk about two primary uses of the dot product in statics. The first one is going to be how to easily find an angle between any two vectors. Okay? Um, I have two 2D vectors here, and you might be thinking to yourself, I have other ways I could find the angle between those. You're absolutely right. You probably could with these, this simple example. But what I'm going to show you works for all vectors in 2D or 3D. And you can in 3D, sometimes it is hard to visualize and draw the correct picture to find the angle between two vectors. The dot product just hands it to you and makes it quite easy. So let's, let's see how we can do this. I'm just going to write A and B down as Cartesian vectors. It looks like A would be um, 1i plus 4j. And we can also find the magnitude of A which would be the square root of the squares, which looks like square root of 1 plus 16, or the square root of 17. B is our happy 3, 4, 5 triangle here. So we would have 4i plus 3j. And of course, its magnitude is going to be 5. Okay, So we have two vectors defined in Cartesian vector notation. Um, now we know if we dot these two vectors together, we know what we're going to get. Let's write down that definition of the dot product. A dotted with B is going to be equal to A B times the cosine of the angle in between them, theta. And of course here, theta would be this angle right here that we're trying to find. What is this angle? OK, so let's go ahead and perform the dot product. And then we'll solve for theta. So to perform the dot product, I multiply like uh, coordinates together. So a dotted with b is going to be equal to 1 times 4, which are the x components, plus 4 times 3, which are the y components. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. We get 16. So. In this case, a dotted with b gives us 16, gives us a scalar out. And what does that scalar mean? Well, it means a, b cosine theta. So we can say 16 is equal to a, which is square root of 17, that's the magnitude of a, times b, which is 5, times the cosine of theta. You'll notice we are left with only one unknown, which is theta. If we divide by this, we can solve for theta. And it would be equal to the inverse cosine of 16 over 5 square root of 17, which turns out to be 39.1 degrees. So you can see it's, we can easily find the uh, angle between any two vectors. And I want to show you one more thing here. If we come back to this equation, what happens if we keep it algebraic? And we divide by the magnitude of a and the magnitude of b. Well, let's see what that would look like. I'd have a dotted with b. And then if you remember, um, I said on the last slide in properties that if, we're, if we have a scalar, we can really put that wherever we want. So I'm going to divide both sides by a, b. These a, b's are going to cancel. Then I'm going to put the a over here under the a, I put the b under the b. That's going to be equal to cosine of theta, because the a, a and b cancel. Now what do we have on this side? We have a vector divided by its magnitude. What is a vector divided by its magnitude? Of course, it's a unit vector. So what this is telling us is that if we dot a unit vector in the a direction, 
with a unit vector in the same direction as the b vector, we're going to end we're going to end up with the cosine theta. In other words, theta is the inverse cosine of a unit vector in the same direction as one vector dotted with a unit vector along the second line. So there you go. You got a quick equation to find theta between any two vectors. Let's move on to the second use. The second way we can use the dot product in statics is to find the projection of a vector along a line. Now that may sound new to you, but you've actually done it hundreds of times using trigonometry. If we have two vectors here, let's talk about what a projection is. Uh, to help you remember, I'll ask you to think of a projector or a really bright light. Okay, If we have a really bright light and we shine it, we're going to put that really bright light parallel to the line we want to project the vector onto, in this case B. We're going to project A onto B. And we have this really bright light shining down on vector A. Well, that is going to cast a shadow. And the shadow of vector A on B is the projection of A on B. Okay? Now, if you look at this, it should be ringing some bells, right? You've done this many times before. You can see that you're actually finding the component of A in the B direction. And we're going to call this A sub subscript B, which is just the projection of A onto B. And I'm going to leave it as a scalar. We're just going to get its magnitude right now. Now, if you were just doing this with trigonometry, you would use SOHCAHTOA. And this is adjacent to the angle. So the magnitude up here, we're going to call A. That's the magnitude of our vector. And we can say the cosine of our angle theta is just going to be equal to that projection of A onto B over the magnitude of A. If we solve for the projection of A onto B, we get A cosine of theta. So that's what we're looking for for our projection. And doesn't that look very similar to the definition of the dot product? Let's write that back down. If we have A dotted with B, that's going to be equal to A B cosine theta. So we're really close. We just got a B in here we don't really want. And if you notice, would it matter how long B is? Would the projection of A change if B was, let's say, twice as long? No, it wouldn't. It would be the same projection. So we really want to get rid of that magnitude of B. How do we do that? Well, we divide it out. And we have to do it on both sides to keep the equation consistent. I'm going to cross that out on this side. And on this side, you'll probably see we have another unit vector. What this tells us is if we want to project a vector onto any line, all we need to do is take the dot product of the vector we're projecting dotted with a unit vector in that direction. And that's going to give us a times the magnitude of our unit vector, which is, of course, 1, so it doesn't change our answer, times the cosine of theta. OK, now that's just giving us the magnitude of the vector. If we wanted to turn it back into a vector with magnitude and direction, we would have to add the direction back in. Of course, it's pretty easy to do, because we already have a unit vector right here in the same direction. So if we wanted our um, AB as a vector, that's our projection of A onto the vector B, it would be equal to its magnitude, which we have calculated right here, times ub, which is a unit vector that shares its direction. OK, this is very powerful, because now we just learned how to take any vector and find the component of that vector along any line. How do we do it? We dot that vector with a unit vector along the line we're interested in. Now, if this was a um, 2D problem and you were using SOHCAHTOA, you would also want the component in this direction. So how are we going to find that vector? Okay, 
There's several ways we can find that vector. First of all, we have a tip to tail relationship. So we can write that out. Let's call this vector over here A perpendicular to B. And you can see we have a tip to tail relationship where the projection of A on B, which we've been calling A sub B, plus, so A sub B is a vector, plus A perpendicular to B, those two components add up to the original vector. So if we wanted to go ahead and find our per perpendicular component, we could just use vector algebra and say A perpendicular to B is equal to A minus that projection. Okay, That's one way to do it. Two more simple ways. If we were to use this equation right here and solve for theta, our perpendicular component would just be A sine theta. And I think you can see that in the picture here. And the third way, of course, would be use Pythagorean theorem. OK, so we have introduced the dot product and gone through two ways that we'll be using it in statics. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, go ahead and move on to the next video.